Welcome to episode 66 of The Carmudgeon Show. My name is Jason Camisa. And I'm Derek Tam hyphen Scott. And I'm James. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> surprise! We have a surprise guest, James Engelsman from The Throttle House. It's, I think it's just Throttle House. Lose the the. It's cleaner. Throttle House. Is that a rebranding or is people have people just been getting that? Uh, so, no, it's not your fault. We've, we've, yeah, your Instagram is The Throttle House. Yeah, the it? Throttle House was taken. <laughs> 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 Welcome to 2022. Yeah. Was, we go by both. We are, I'm also The James. The James. From The Throttle House. I just refer to you YouTube. and I'm James. Yeah. Every time, hey, hey, buddy, I was talking to him and I'm James. And he said, Bubba, it's just become your thing. Um, we should probably say that The Carmudgeon Show is brought to you by. Well, I was going to say part of the Haggerty Podcast Network. Derek, oh. that's your line. <gasps> you, you just said it successfully. You didn't clap. I didn't Could clap. And clap? You just, oh, yes. Hold on. No, no, no. You got to watch this in person. Watch no, no, no. This is really no, 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 no. I don't want to do it. Hyphen Clapton. Hyphen Clapton is what we call him because he can't clap. He gets very like, clap. You should clap. Just to clap. We're all going to clap. Okay, ready? We'll go you clap. first. In succession. <laughs> <laughs> you are the best at it. Uh, so he just yeah. gets this like uh, um, <laughs> I'm so confused. Why do I have to clap? Um, and this episode, reliable, yes, the effect, reliable carriers. You, ha your drink thing is orange, like the reliable trucks that we saw all over Pebble Beach. There were quite a lot. There were. I noticed them in abundance. Did you? And mm -hmm. I heard that you had a conversation about oh uh, traveling. Yes, things. so I learned that they do cross-border transport, which is kind of a big deal because it's always, if you're using the normal domestic carriers, they won't do it. Uh, that is to Canada, not not international. That's not where you live. Great White North. Are you sponsored by, by the Great White North? I'm sponsored by Canada, yeah. <laughs> the entire nation. <laughs> yeah, the entire nation. This is like the Olympics. Because you have a weird Canadian accent. I have not got, a, oh, I see what you yeah. mean. It's different. <laughs> weird Canada. No, people yeah. accuse me of losing my English accent all the time. Well, the English do. No, no okay. they, the Americans like on the audience like to point out they've noticed my English accent is diminishing, and they it's not true. <laughs> They're just like, has anyone else noticed? No, okay, that's really weird. It's a conspiracy theory. It's like a, it's like a hyper. They've noticed that thing. I'm starting to sound more German. Yeah. I, don't, <laughs> I don't believe this. Um, were we we're supposed to read an ad, but we we're sponsored by Reliable, um, which is the orange truck that was like it's unbelievable looking at that field. We should have taken pictures of I this. I did. <gasps> We're going to have an insert. insert. We're going to do an insert in an ad read. Mm. Uh, no, I mean, it's just there's a lot of orange trucks there. And they go across the border, which is nice, because normally if you're trying to move a car across the border, there's like two carriers that will mm. carry them across the border. And it's fairly complex, and you have to clear customs and all this stuff. So that's quite a meaningful value add. You know what a meaningful value add is? When a, a discount. Truck, uh, well, yes. Whole, I was going to say when a truck actually shows up and then your car uh, is unloaded from it and it's undamaged, which is my experience with Reliable. But if you mention the Carmudgeon Show in the memo, hold on, what's this whole thing? If you go to if you go to Reliable and request a quote, you finish this. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> then in the comment section, mention the Carmudgeon Show in whatever capacity you would like, and including you with expletives. Uh, then you get a 10% <laughs> discount on your quote. That's pretty cool. That applies to everyone except for you because we don't like Canada. That's okay. And Canadians. That's all right. We got it good anyway. <laughs> we don't need you. That, fine. Then you can't come back because this week we are talking about mm. Monterey Car Week. Car Week. Yeah. Culminating in Pebble Beach. You got your Pebble Beach cherry popped this year. the first time. Yeah. Was it painful? Yeah. Wow. It, no. it was same same as last time. It, Are you all, blistered? All too quick. I had no idea what happened, but I think it was good. <laughs> but you, and you're blistered. Blistered, yeah. burned. Yeah, you are Up, sunburned. Yeah. Your feet are blistered. Upset. Yeah, yeah upset. Uh, we both got a ride around Laguna Seca in the new Lucid Air Sapphire uh, by Ben Collins, the Stig. Yes. And did you uh, did you start out by talking to him like tonight? <laughs> I, I did. <laughs> Tonight, the Stig drives around the track. I Richard bet he's crashes never. A car I, just, I just handed him a, ne a nervous shake, <laughs> knowing that I was about to go around Laguna Seca in a 1200 plus horsepower car. I bet no one has ever introduced themselves to him like that before, though. I, he did laugh out loud when I said tonight. Yeah, really, tonight! Yeah. And he just burst out laughing. English people are good at humoring Americans. A tame racing driver. <laughs> So this was the, with the <laughs> this reached the end where we tell our guest to leave. I'm going to remove his name from the screen. And I was James. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> now you know who the guest is. Roll the credits. Are going to do. We didn't sing. Thank God. Let's never do that again. Deet, 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 deet. 
And we're back. Right. Hi. Hi. So uh, let's just ignore him because he's weird and not funny at all. That kind of defeats the purpose of having him on board. No, I, I we, we are supposed to be carmudgeons. <laughs> I, I thought we were doing an intro where you were going to say you're Jason and Derek, and then I was going to do that. That already one. happened through the magic of editing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yes, yes, sorry. That's already happened. So now we just continue on, like, as if you already know that we've <laughs> introduced you. See, you already saw your name there. I've been here five seconds, and I've already ruined the whole podcast. I'm Ru- sorry. No, it everything. takes much more than that to ruin one of these. <laughs> we would have done that long We would ago. know. <laughs> Um, well, thank you for having me. I, I, I sit amongst giants here, so hopefully I can add. Just, just because you're short, chair, chair and I'm fat. <laughs> I'm 5'10 on a good day. Are you? No, you speak uh, speak dumb units. <laughs> yeah, for you guys. Continental American units. You know, actually, English people do use 5'10. I, oh, really? I, yeah, I don't. Well, no, I think now people use centimeters, but I couldn't tell you why I am centimeters. It's not done in like Fortnites or stones. <laughs> not done. No. no, stones, we do weight in stones. Yeah, okay. yeah. 11 stone at your service. <laughs> You're a meter seventy eight, probably. Cool. I'm five ten and a half, one seventy nine. That's how yeah. I know this. Oh, okay. Because I was in Germany and they don't do the, they don't do the feet on the meat, the inches. They're committed. <clears throat> um, this is nominally a car podcast. What? It is. Uh, I mean, car mudgeon. I last assume. last week when the TV broke, it was just a mudgeon, mudgeon, <laughs> mudgeon, <laughs> mudgeon <laughs> all <podcast>. miscellaneous <laughs> mudgeonry, all types of mudgeonry. Uh, you don't look tired. Oh, I you feel tired. Yeah. I've rested. I've napped three times. Oh, you're such a twat. This morning. Um, yeah, the, we all survived car week. My, Barely. My, my first one. Your first ever. Yeah. Wow. I'm I think interested th- to hear your impressions. It was not gentle. <laughs> um, it was, have, which is funny because the title of this podcast is going to be James's pebble popping or cherry popping pebble or something. It'll be, you know. You, cherry popping so pebble. It was wow. a violent... Yeah, Cherry make pop. sure you leave the safe filter search or whatever on for yep. that one. Yep. I'm eleven stone and one pebble <laughs> heavy. Um, yeah, so it was it was very interesting. I didn't realize how exhausting it was be, would be, and I, I definitely thought going in, it's quite intimidating, really, because you you hear it's the center of the car universe and everyone's there and there's all these events going on. And if you had a live feed of everything that's happening, it would be insane. There'd be eight things happening at once everywhere, all over. Well, eighteen things happening 18, at once. Yeah. yeah, it'd be like watching a security camera thing where they have the- yeah. Um, so I thought there'd be FOMO the whole time. I thought, oh, we're doing this, but we're not doing that. We're doing this, we're not doing that. Um, but I actually felt fine in the end. Didn't I felt justified. You still drive past like Gunther Works and then Pagani and all these banners. And you're you, like, okay. you say you don't have FOMO, but we were just looking, you were just looking through Instagram and saw that somebody got some car. I don't know what the hell it was. Di Tommaso. Di Tommaso. Yeah. There's so much FOMO because there's so much stuff going on that I oh, think yeah. you had so much FOMO, you just didn't even realize you had. I was just too tired to care. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yes, that's, that's what it, it is. Yeah. Too tired the to care. The only way to do is clone yourself. And unfortunately, Thomas couldn't come. So that's the only chance I have of cloning myself. Hey, Thomas. Yeah. Next time we're going to do this and have even more fun without you. So you can come here. Um, I mean, <laughs> Did I left you feel ha- like it was in the fact the center of the automotive universe? Definitely. Yeah. You're, like, you're, you're talking to Christian von Koenigsegg. Horatio Vigani walks behind you. High, <laughs> you know, high fives Gordon Murray. And then you're like, what is going on? And yeah. And then also there's a bunch of creators. So you're walking past everyone you've seen on YouTube. It feels like the middle of the internet as well. Mm. I thought it was a bit weird. Real it's live weird. internet. Yeah. Not unlike this. Yeah. <laughs> Just a much smaller, less in, in important corner of it. Um, yeah. When we say it's exhausting, I think a lot of people look at us like we're crazy. But I left the house usually 7, 7.30 in the morning and got home anywhere between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m., never having the opportunity to sit in a bathroom for yeah. a couple minutes. And no, you don't sit down. You don't. Mm-hmm. You don't sit down. No. So, and I, it's, it's a lot of, you know, you have to stay charismatic mm-hmm. as well. You can't just be like, hi, how are you, but God, are you doing good shit? Uh, <laughs> that's because people know who you are, yeah. Well, yeah, now, especially. Yeah. Did, you get, did you get a lot of attention? Where? At events, <laughs> meaning people, people like, hey, I know you from the YouTubes. So. Oh, yeah, I mean, yes, people approach me, yeah. and I'm just painfully awkward, so, you know. You're it just ends poorly you. for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> hi, Derek, and you're, beep, boop, 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 and run. Um, facts <laughs> here's a fact for you random fact about and the 1922 then, yeah, and then the skeletor runs yeah. off it's that <laughs> meme um all right so your favorite part of the the whole week so you were there for all you were six days right yeah i got in on wednesday um i had some interesting experiences it, 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 it there was a combination of stuff it was seeing something being revealed all the way to being uh ben collins's passenger on Laguna Seca in the fastest performance sedan of all time, um, which I think we'll touch on in a bit. Yeah, I think we should. Um, but yeah, my favorite bit. I don't know. I think just 
just getting stuck in. Uh, the quail was very cool. Uh, there was something that I, I thought, I wasn't sure if I could dig into the well of curiosity to enjoy things like the Concourse d'Elegance. Is mm-hmm. that, I'm saying that right? Um, Cut but, core. Um, that is very rude. Wait, this is PG. You're British. I, 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 You're British. You guys call your mothers cunts. I, yes. Mom, stop being a cunt. No, she's a good cunt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I didn't, I couldn't f- drum up any curiosity for the pre-war stuff. I found it, I found it. Any of it? Yeah, very quickly it became, ah. de- I became desensitized to it. Everything just looked like Jitty Jitty Bang Bang to me. Oh, you need, you need a, a good <laughs> tour guide for that stuff. It's not the most accessible, but if you yeah. have a good tour guide who knows the stuff well, then they can be like, look at this. <laughs> Walking around that. with this guy. <laughs> well, no, he's no, like, no. that stuff is, I'm you over know, it. I'm over it at that point. The, yeah. the thing that we talked no, about. No, but there's so much cool stuff, there, like the avion voisin. There's too much cool stuff. Yeah. You know, you can walk through a crowd of the most amazing people on earth and you're walking through a crowd. You don't know, you don't get to know any individual. You're just, it's a person, it's a person and they're all in my way, fuck them. And that's the, by the time you get to Sunday after five or six days of 18 hours on your feet, talking to people, you're walking through a parking lot of multi-million dollar cars and they're just there and it's too much and you couldn't possibly take the time to know anything about any of them if you had if i, I had, disagree fundamentally with that I, you can choose like six choose six cars and be like this one's super interesting if, if you if, if you're walking you around with me guide. right yeah if you're walking around with me i could make it interesting right i've but done you that have before. to choose six out of the what 150 cars that are on the, yeah. that lawn that, that's better, Otherwise, better than zero because you were implying that zero was the number well no he showed me the testarossa from mm. back in i mean it's not pre-war <laughs> no no it wasn't pre-war this is a um the final Pebble Beach one. Right. Every one of those cars, I'm, I'm actually agreeing with you. Every one of those cars, I would love to spend a half an hour or an hour getting a full tour around and just inspecting because they don't become interesting until you understand what's behind them, what they are, and then you start looking at the details of they were figuring out how to engineer an automobile and every one of them is vastly different. That's when they become interesting. A field of them is just overloaded. Just a field of amazing scholars becomes a crowd of people yeah. in your way. So it's like a museum without a plaque behind right. anything. Yeah. It's just a blank museum. It's too much. It's I get it. I get it. I mean, uh, there was a Lancia di Lambda there that they had driven across the country. And that was very cool. And when you get the full context on that, or you understand like, well, the di Lambda was very significant because, you know, first ever this or that, mm-hmm. you know, unitary construction in 19... 19- 31 or something like that then it starts to become interesting but you need someone who knows the car well enough to be like this right. one was owned by the maharaja of blah 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 and then he Don't be offended, turned Jason, it into a pickup truck I found my new tour guide for next year go yeah. please <laughs> i mean i typically don't even stick around on sunday by the time that that happens look those cars aren't my primary interest if and this but this is also the same issue that we have when we talk about want people wanting people who are only you know into douchey supercars to have appreciation for car of 1985, right? Those ca- that is exactly the same experience. Is that they that you haven't had enough pre-war car interactions to be like, oh, these are really cool because or like these compare, right? Yeah. We were always talking about how the breadth of your experience with whatever set of cars allows you to appreciate some car. Like, why is the 288 GTO so special to drive? Well, you have to drive everything else from that same period, and then when you get in one, you're like, holy shit. Uh, or and modern cars as well but you need to have enough experiences if you'd only ever driven one car and it was a 288 gto you'd be like yeah all cars are like this yeah Uh, and pre-war cars are like that too if you've only ever driven you know never driven a pre-war car you Mm -hmm. get into i don't know jag ss100 or alpha 8c 2300 which are i think some of the just a couple of examples of really great driving pre-war cars you don't appreciate how many standard deviations away from the norm they are and you don't get to do that when you're on a a lawn correct also true and if you haven't spent years, like we were talking about from the expert point of view episode, where it's like, oh, you need hours and hours and hours and hours doing this stuff uh, to really get. And, and that's the fault of the people who own them. That's a fault of the fact that they're not really usable on modern roads. But it's also uh, just just the fact that the history of the automobile is so long at this point that there are too many things, too many data points. And you can't be an expert in all of them. Yeah, I mean, I don't you. know shit about... Uh, <laughs> Uh, you can't even think of something you don't know shit about nascar (laughs) i don't know shit about nascar yeah uh i'm not that strong on american like uh pre-war stuff i've never driven a duesenberg so but i don't think that the the desensitization is exclusive to those cars i use that as an example but yes normally in my everyday life if i see a 765 lt spider go past i go ooh. yes and and at car week quite literally yeah no shit's given. rimac 765 lt christian von koenigsegg drives past in his koenigsegg and by the end of the week you're like 
Yeah. Uh, we, saw, we saw we were at the Quail and a, like a Ford Mondeo, whatever the equivalent is. I don't know what Contour. it was. Drove past like a, and it, it was like a 2004 something, and it was like a refreshing thing. It felt like I'd stepped back from zero gravity down to Earth and been like, oh, humans. Yeah. Did you see that Contour SVT on the highway yesterday? No, I didn't. Oh, we got passed by a, co- a Contour SVT, I which didn't. was oh my god, hot as shit back in the day. Yeah, that's uh, it's I the Mondeo with like a body kit and oh, okay. a spicy motor. Yeah, it's okay. uh, you know typical sports car formula, but they're they didn't obviously sell that well because what American is going Manual. to spend a bunch of money for a V6 front wheel drive performance car I that's made for, by Ford. I looked for a year for one once. Unsuccessfully. Unsuccessfully. Evidently. They're, they're very difficult, difficult to find. Um, yeah. So overwhelming for sure. Um, and douchey according to Derek. Did I say that? Yeah. You, you mentioned douchey supercars. I was so talking I'm about modern supercars. Yeah. Yes. I mean, you were using that as a vehicle to uh, advance a narrative that is very near and dear to your heart, but. There's just a lot of excessive display of... But in defense of supercars, modern supercars, it's hard to... Like, a lot of the amazing legacy cars that were there are millions. Like, I've never seen money like it. So, mm-hmm. you know, as much as it, the 765LT seems like a forced clinical experience of supercar these days compared to, like, the old heritage stuff, I don't... It seems like it comes at a huge discount compared to the stuff we saw. It does. You know? Because it's not as good. No. Uh, let's, I'm just trying to think <laughs> if there are any counterpoints to that. I mean, yeah, Countach's have gotten expensive because Countach's used to be $150,000. Yeah, well, they that used to be seventy five. No, I know. The one we reviewed recently was eight hundred grand. I, I know, which is just asinine Canadian. To me. Canadian. Oh, so that, what is that? Six, $7.65. 40, 47 cents. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, so, I don't know, Ferrari 348s, like that's a car that is, well, discounted, thoroughly discounted. Mm-hmm. Not for long, I'm sure. I mean, yeah, that car, just the aesthetic, it's maximum 90s. They're cheap enough. And when you experience it compared to, like you were saying, um, I mean, if a modern supercar is $300,000 and a vintage supercar is $800,000, then yeah. that at, what are they, $65,000 maybe starts to make a lot of sense. Yeah, that's true. And you've got your Dino as well. which oh, is That was so good. Still. I, I chatted with Gordon Murray yesterday. Something he has that, one, right? He has one. Uh, and so I... We started a quick quickie conversation about it and I asked him what was interesting about it. So what I love about the car is that it's not, it's un, I have a douche factor calculus. That is the, the amount of performance that the looks promise divided by the amount of performance that the car actually delivers. So if the looks promise a 10 and it delivers a two, it's a douche factor of five. Right. What's an example um, of that? Oh, you're dividing. Ferrari 308. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, or uh, Testarossa. Also, this is the only coffee I've had. Yeah, so a car like a Testarossa, for example, looks promise a 10. It delivers, experience-wise, what you say, three, four? Mm, I was going to say four and a half. Okay, so I like the one, we, I like the one we drove. Um, I would go north of five on the one we drove. Okay, well, I would say respect. three. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're just not, they're not sporty experiences. No. This may actually re- just have validated what Derek says about you not having a lot of experience with those. No, that that, yeah, that feels good to hear. Not. But you yeah. have driven a, <laughs> you have driven a Countach. Yeah. Right, so I mean, how would you compare the Countach to the Testarossa? Like uh, visually, first, let's start with aesthetics. Like, what do they looks, both? Promise? It looks more nuts. The Countach looks more nuts. The one we drove. With yeah, the so that's the, what the, is that? A ten or nine? Hundred percent a ten. Yeah, 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 and what is the Testarossa visually? Seven or eight. Okay, and it's not as crazy looking as the Countach for sure. Yeah, it has the strakes. Yeah, mm-hmm. but that's about. And driving wise, the Countach was oppressive. It didn't feel like it handled well. It just felt really. Uh, the place where the Countach comes into its own mm, is less not into its own. It's less out of its element is uh, sort of high speed sweepers. Okay. But at low speeds, it's, it's really yeah, oppressive. Yeah. We it's were tired a, for three days after yeah. that. But it's a very that, physical. Okay. Is that not the whole point of a super? I, I just no, it can be, but we were tired after driving the Cobra replica and that didn't. Yeah, but that's know. similar. Somebody, I think yeah. those cars are philosophically more aligned than disaligned yeah. in the sense that it's just this really physical, intense, demanding, like assault. But does it, but does it need to be exhausting to be a good car? Like, no, no, no. It, he, his, his point is that it actually makes it a bad car, which then makes it a good car. Right. So I don't think <laughs> supercars... Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Up is down. <laughs> <laughs> I don't... <laughs> Potato. <clears throat> the reason the... For NSX is a perfect example. The original yeah. NSX. It got rave reviews. Everyone loved it. It is a terrible supercar. So we disagree there as well. Because you're looking at it it from the journalist perspective. It is a very nice car to live with and interact with. But that is not the point in my opinion. We pushed on the track. It was great. That's not the point. 
The point is get in that car on a Sunday and go have an experience and it's shit. It's got shit steering, shit handling. Sh- the engine sounds like shit. It's just not an experience. It, you get in and it's da 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 Oh, I'm in a Civic. And the starter motor sounds like a Civic. And then it doesn't deliver on this sensory overload expectation that I have for something that looks that way. I want to get in that car and go he for it. He wants to be assaulted. Yeah. He's telling you he wants to be assaulted. The Type S we drove drove the way it looked, I felt. The which? The Zanardi we drove. Ah. Yeah. I think I think it drove as it looked. Did you drive it? Did you drive it or did you oh, have yeah. it on track i quite liked the type r also but i see, i get what he you're saying right yeah. so i want to get in that car to me the the measure of a sports car a supercar is something that i can't wait to get in into and then i can't wait to get out of but i still wind up taking the long road anyway so you get in it and you're like this is amazing and it's just sensory overload yeah. it's a lot it's not your normal driving car. I do it's like that opposite. definition you just gave. Right. I think it's and then you strong. get in and you're like, this is oh, it's a little bit too much. And you find yourself, oh, just another. I'll take that other detour. And you get out of the car and you are thoroughly exhausted. Yeah, you want a nap, you want a shower, yeah. you need a drink. Exactly. <laughs> I think All you at just once. Outed yourself at an as a alcoholic beer shower drinking <laughs> um, napper. You're, you're definitely not describing the modern supercar. No, and I'm also and not that's describing why he's so the hard on them. And that's why I'm so hard on it because I just want an experience. I think. If you want an everyday, that's why I'm hard on 9-11 for that reason. The yeah. 9-11 is magical at its ability to, to be an everyday supercar. And I actually agree with you, even though I'm a 9-11 fanboy, mm. and that's why the 9-11s that I like the least are often really iconic ones like 959. I know it's not 9-11, but right. fa- functionally it is. Or 993 Turbo, four-wheel drive, turbocharged, like pretty insular, comfortable. It's too, mm-hmm. it's not exciting enough. It's not fizzy enough. It's not, I don't feel like I'm getting beat up by it. And that's why... I think we'll talk in the next episode about the new roof. Right. Uh, the new roof, uh, as far as modern equipment goes, is really much closer in spirit to an old car. Right. Okay. That's I, exciting. So this, it, I'm not invalidating your your, yeah. your point of view. I'm explaining why we come at the same car so very differently. And there's the, I call it the journal, journalist way of looking at it, which is offensive to journalists and possibly to you, and I don't mean that. No, I, I, I get called a journalist. That's great. Right. But <laughs> my mom doesn't think I am. So, <laughs> uh, James's mom. What's your mom's name? Mandy. Mandy, he's a he's not a journalist. He's, he's an idiot, but he's he's a sweetheart. We like him. Um, you have to be an idiot to be a to onto this podcast. Right, I have just <laughs> <laughs> um, she's sitting there going, and I'm Mandy. <laughs> <laughs> What's the fucking big deal? Yeah, uh, sorry, Mandy, it's a big deal. Um, yeah, I just I, I look at it as a, the cars that make the best cars when they're new, and this is a perfect explanation for your dis, 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 taste for the e thirty uh, e thirty nine M five. Cars that are amazing cars when they knew or where they're new tend to become less interesting collectibles because we don't want them for the things like grocery store shopping and and just tootling around. We want them to be an experience. Um, and there are flavors of that. Like Mura is a fucking experience and it beats the shit out of you in not really good ways. But, but that's the best part of it. It does have light steering and it rides well. It's fine. But it is an assault on the senses. It's yep. stunning as well. Yeah. Absolutely stunning. It's so beautiful. First of all, that car is so beautiful. It, it really genuinely does defy all criticism. But it didn't I need to do anything it. other than that. Doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't. And, and the fact that it sounds the way it does, which isn't music, it's noise. But it's so much fucking noise and it's so, so complex, you don't even know what the hell's going on. It's interesting. That makes it a terrible car. And so this is why you hear people, a lot of journalists will say, Mira is terrible to drive. Yeah, don't go grocery shopping in the thing. It's not going to work. But I as have a, been to Costco. In I, you're weird in all the right ways. I mean, that's you're the perfect mirror consumer. Mirror consumer. <laughs> but yeah, there's, there's dozens of you, right? But an E39 M5 <laughs> yes. was the best <laughs> sedan ever. E39 was the best sports sedan ever made, and therefore, and if the M, M5 does everything better, that therefore that's the best sports sedan ever made. The M5. In that. In the no, in the definition of when it was new, <laughs> when it was new, it was it was the best car. To, it does everything better than anything else. Does that make it a hair on fire experience? Now that we're looking back on it, twenty five years later, saying I want to go raise hell. No, it's still a really good car. A little bit less interesting of a collectible, and all the other sports sedans you mentioned that are better to drive are better to drive, and therefore maybe a better collectible. Mm. That's all. And so NSX promises ten, delivers two. It's douche five. Which is strange because you really has no street cred because it's a V6. But so what's a few that, that do the opposite then? The reason I have that GT4 is one, it's douche <laughs> negative, right? I mean, because it, promises, it looks a two. I mean, like, yeah, I was gonna say promises two delivers nine. Okay, can you name two others? Uh, two eight eight GTO promises promises nine delivers ten. That's a negative douche factor. Um, uh, Mura promises ten delivers ten in terms of experience. Okay. 
Um, yeah, even mean, though it's not good. Right. Renault R5 Turbo delivers, you know, b- delivers a 10 on the fucking experience thing. Promises, I don't know, whatever. It looks like a toad. I love the look of it. Uh, I, me too. Maybe not I, 10, but it's definitely up there. It's up there. So, yeah. but e- either way, as long as it's less than 10. I see. Um, but I don't, the, the douche factor is only one part. How do you it. rate the Countach and all that? <laughs> looks 10 for sure. Depends on the anniversary. On, yeah. Exactly. With, without the bumpers, then it's just at nine. But, um, but dr- delivers on the promise of an experience. It's yes. maybe not great. No, I mean, it is very, it is a, a, a very singular right. experience yeah. the Countach the, the, the worst defenders else. are the most of the Ferrari V8s the early V8s 308 308 GDB oh I was like well all of them kind of 328 350 355 I hate oh god Paul is going to get mad at us again I if think you see something flying from, from off camera <laughs> I think there's definitely room for a difference of opinion of course there right. is it, it is. also has to do with like how do you get your jollies and what else have you operated right you know, if you haven't, if you don't have the reference points to contextualize, it's the same thing I just finished saying about some other topic. We just re- refer back to four minutes ago. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but also, it, it's dependent on what else you have experienced. And uh, I think that those Ferrari V8s, there, there's also some willingness, I think, on the part of people to prioritize different things. If they're caring about how that car looks and they really like the way this car sounds, just to take the example of the 355, uh, then they will sort of, from my perspective, con themselves into liking the car. And or the stuff that offends me about the car, they don't care about, and that's okay. That is, is it right possible that knowledge is a curse here? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah, and it's always interesting to meet your heroes because sometimes you end up coming away very disappointed, and then other times you come away feeling very um, appointed. I guess, which is <laughs> like, appointed. <laughs> which I is am like, now a king. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, and and then you're like, ah, shit! It's four million dollars. I like really need and want one of these. You know, two eighty eight, or mm-hmm. I think. F40. F40 is also interesting because the F40... Promises um, 14. Yes. And it delivers, I think, also, but it doesn't deliver what you think it's going to deliver. Testarossa issue? Is that... It's not It's not quite the same because the F40, you look at it and it's like, oh, there's no carpets and the dashboard's made of Velcro and it just looks really intense. Uh, and it's not like that. It's it's more uh, like your 308 almost in terms of excess. It looks really intimidating. The Countach also, the Countach is the opposite in this sense. Right. The Countach is very heavy to interact with. It feels very inert. You feel incompetent. You really have to grab it by the scruff of its neck. And then it starts to get good. And I don't know if you guys had the chance to do that. But eventually if you yeah, do we, that to a Countach, it yeah. will sort of shrink around you and become more manageable and less of an uncooperative piece of shit. Honestly, no, we enjoyed uh, it. You mean like a Charizard that doesn't won't work for its trainer? Or are you guys too old? Oh for that my god! I, kn- I I wasn't a Pokemon. I, I at least know he's uh, talking about Pokemon. Well, we, no, we drove it. Like, what on earth are you what talking about? What kind of car is that? We drove it hard enough that some, like, the comment section was like, I can't believe he let you use his car like that. So good. Okay, that's good news. So yeah, if it's one of those cars where you cannot be unsure, yeah. you have to assert your will over the car. I like cars like that because it's not immediately accessible. I've talked about this before. If the car immediately drops trowel, you're like, I'm not interested in this. Put out too, <laughs> too easily. Uh, and the Countach makes you work for it and you earn it. And what you get in exchange is like, it's better. It's still like a handful, still a lot of work. Yeah. Uh, but I like that depth. I like the it forces you to you know, go on this journey of becoming worthy. And that's another thing about pre-war cars that's very true as well. And I'm still very much on that with like pre pre Rolls Royce merger Bentleys. I'm, I need to just spend a day or a week or something with one to get good at it. But I like cars like that where you have to, it challenges you because if you just immediately get in and that's the appeal of the NSX, but it's also the curse. And I think that's what Jason is talking about. The problem with the, but I mean, you're talking, NSX. you're talking about the NSX in the same, going back to the knowledge being a curse. You're talking about the NSX in the same sentence as an F40. Um, of which there was a really nice yeah, gray one. At examples Coric. of what, how they're different. <laughs> right, but no one on, listening to this who has an NSX is going, oh, damn, I guess I really need to get here's an F40. The, okay, so here's the problem like, with well, an NSX. They should. <laughs> you just told me it was $4 million. I know. They should get <laughs> one. I, mean, a, everyone should, should, I know, everyone should <laughs> get one. Well, yeah. You can have a far more <clears throat> visceral, fun experience in a front-wheel drive hot hatch than you can in an NSX, and that's the problem with it. That's almost a good thing, though, because those are brand new and they come with tech. I'm not talking about new. I'm talking about the same vintage. Oh, I thought you were talking about Veloster N, because I know you love that thing. Oh, yeah. But that, I mean, that is definitely more fun than, than and more capable and faster in, than in, in every way than an SX. But that's the march of progress. That's okay. But, you know, 1991, go, go GTI 16 valve. It was a, it was a you're better You're talking experience. about Volkswagen and not 205 when you say yes. GTI. Yes. 
uh, or, or 205. 205 60, fine. I, <clears throat> I mean, there are just so many other ways. Of, how much does a what, the NSX cost these days? 60 grand, 70 grand, 80? Somewhere in there. Yeah, good depending on mileage more, and yeah. which engine. Right. And they all can that go stuff. six figures easily. I could find, I think Derek and I could probably come up with a list of 30 cars that are in the same price range that are orders of magnitude more interesting to interact with. And NSX is beautiful. I mean, yeah. I would like to do... Listen, a, I don't represent NSX. No, I, it's fine. I dislike no. it less than he does. I actually yeah. quite like but it. You, yeah. But you also interacted with a Type R. Correct. Right. And go, I drove Type S-ish. So. Go drive a base three liter. They're not good. Okay. They're, they're okay. They're good at going to the grocery store. That's not what you buy a supercar. There was the same reason why the second gen NSX, the current one, failed completely. They engineered it to be a good car to live with every day, and then forgot the cup holders and forgot the iPhone holder and forgot the glove box and all the rest of the stuff. But they're like, it's got great visibility and it's got tires that have great traction in deep water. Yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? That is, I'm sorry, that's not why I want my supercar. I want my supercar to light my hair on fire and I can get out of it and be like, holy shit, I need to drive a Prius for three days now. I need a refractory period. Yeah. So right. is, it, is it possible that modern supercars are just becoming fast sports cars? Is that maybe what we were witnessing here? No, they're just GTs. Fast GTs. Just GTs. Yeah, we had that with the new Z as well. Yeah, you guys hated that car, huh? No. No. No, no it just... <laughs> You know what? It was it was marred slightly by the fact that we had that slightly by the second gear grind. You couldn't go into second gear from first or third without it going, um, and that was really that kind of ruined the experience of the manual. But it was a fine Grand Tour. It felt just as quick as the Supra. I, I don't know. Since I've been sold on the two car solution stuff, where you get the daily and you have the the compromise thing, I find it that middle ground, which I used to own. I used to have an Audi TTS. I used to have an F Type. That sort of comfortable middle ground Grand Tour isn't as tempting to me anymore personally right. but obviously when we review the car we look at it from all the angles so yeah you guys did that you, you did that the right way yeah the, the thing i give that car an, a, a pretty positive review it's got some pretty substantial issues with it uh, i'm mostly glad that the line that we kept writing into the script and, and cutting out because i felt bad saying was it's really not all that great i'm just glad it exists so if you watch that <laughs> icons episode like the whole the, the whole episode is basically like thank you for making this car Wish it was better. Well, um, people have suggested that the Nismo version will fix it. The problem is, is that without getting too journalisty, which is a curse I hear, um, it, it the price point of a Nismo is going to be ridiculous because the 40, one we drive is sixty yeah. Canadian. Forty k US for the for the the actual Z is already too much. Not when BRZ yeah. is. Don't a forget the ADM. Yeah, the, BR, the right. BRZ head and the eighty six are still the gold, and I love them. That's so good. I'm gl I'm glad to hear you say that. Because, I owned one. You know, I owned one. Well, I mean, you, you also own a Miata, so clearly yeah. you understand that the, your, the car is not about bragging rights, and it's about oh, it's the about experience. experience. Yeah, yeah. Um, you've not driven new eighty six. I have years, not, right? but NSX for you delivers some kind of experience that is well compelling. We, so we were back to backing it with the new one on track, mm -hmm. and every I don't time wonder you liked it because the new yeah. one's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we also, well, we also also on track is a good environment to like yeah. almost anything. Yeah, right? well, anything at the an limit. Eight, eight thousand RPM V techy intake, Rory. I mean, that engine flat out is fucking magic. Yeah. So we were on uh, Big Willow. So the straight was. I get awesome. it now. And yeah, I get it now. It's stable. Okay, it likes to turn. So you're saying we experience only one flavor of it. Go drive it on the road. Okay, when you have a eighty a five speed car with an eighty two mile an hour second gear yeah. and a forty eight mile an hour first gear, try to start it on a hill. Okay. Um, you can't go into second. Thirty miles an hour in in town, you can't go into second. So you're at five thousand RPM, no throttle. So you're listening to V six noises. And then try it on a bumpy back road where the nose keeps hitting the ground. <laughs> and so you're like, ah, I can't use any of the car's capability because I'm tearing the front of it off right now. Yeah. I liked it. Uh, the Type R. Mm -hmm. When I I need to drive one. I need to drive a six P three two because apparently that fixed the torque issue and the gear partially the gearing issue. Japan got the correct gear ratios. We got an EPA set of gears. Yeah, and the um, Type R has a completely different final drive, so yeah. everything's just smooshed down. Although it's still fairly t tall, tall, I think yeah. for your liking. Yeah, um, it's not that I disagree with you, but now I understand it. If on a on a track that thing would be, and this was also the Type S mm -hmm. start one, so. Well, it's an RD. It's the answer to the type S. Uh, speaking of yeah. things that we experience on track, we both got a ride from the Stig in yes. a Lucid Sapphire. 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 Which is their new... They haven't quite figured it out yet. I love I love that. You know what happened. Peter Rawlinson was like, right, we're going to make a brand called Sapphire. It's going to be represent our, our most. And the marketing team is like, most what? And he's like, I don't know, just fucking paint it blue and put a sapphire badge on it and they have yet to figure out what this means it still seems weird to me it seems like a luxury brand of a car but but, but you can only get it on the car with three motors and five gazillion horsepower well actually you know and you probably know more about this than me but the 
the motors are rated for 600 horsepower each. Yep. And when there were two of them, they got it to 1111. So what's that? 89 less than mm-hmm. 600. So, and then they added a third motor and now it's over 1200. Why isn't it 1600? Because the limitation in EVs is not, think about it this way. It's not actually how much horsepower the, the, the engine can make. It's how much fuel you can deliver because there's a, a from the battery a, a, pack right the right. limiting factor is how much uh, how much current the battery pack can deliver okay so what the what the each of those motors can deliver 600, 600 horsepower but the battery pack and that but whole not system, simultaneously well they they could but not the simultaneously when attached right. to that the, battery that, pack when i say battery i'm talking about the battery and the electronics and the inverters and all of that stuff has a maximum and my guess is that maximum is somewhere around 13 right um, what they can do is put so that front motor is also six, right? Yeah. So they can put 600 to the front and let's say 600 to the left rear, right? Which is 1200, but then also be generating 400 at the right rear and to using as torque vectoring. I see. So they don't really need the 1800, full 1800 horsepower that the motors can do anyway. <laughs> well, because six, they don't really need 1800 horsepower. Oh, six, yeah. 1800, yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. yeah, you don't, you don't, let me tell you, I got to, <laughs> after getting a ride in that, the, the last thing I thought in the 1100 horsepower car was, well, this could really use it. Yeah, it was very quick. But I was annoyed by Ben Connors because normally when I meet racing drivers or, or super bike drivers, they're, they're worn and they look, you know, 20 years old and they are. <laughs> and it's like, you know what? He's dedicated himself to his craft. Not Ben. He looks like he's just got off the plane from Spain. I know. He's like <laughs> tan and happy and charming. And I was just like, you can't have all of this. This isn't fair. <laughs> Uh, but it was it was, it was really, all those years behind the mask. It was a really good UV filter. So yeah. where the other guys are exposed uh, to the elements, he was just preserved. It was an insane experience, though. He's he's uh, he's a pretty good driver, and uh, <laughs> I didn't I didn't feel worried at all. Actually, he he clearly yeah. had it, and the car is so. I've been driving a Grand Touring performance all week. Okay, so you had a much better experience than I did because I came from a. 37 year old 47 year old ferrari yeah and you know he floored it and i fucking world oh it's right yeah, yeah. Uh, how much faster did it feel than the than your car than the than the car you've been driving um i don't know I, there was you know there was obviously like contributing factors so i was in a racing seat with a helmet and all that sort of stuff Cage. and i was in the passenger seat and i've been driving all week mm-hmm. so it felt absurdly quick and i didn't expect it to be as tail happy as it was so there's there, there's a video of it we did this huge drift coming into the the is it the front straight mm-hmm. I don't know. yeah yep. and uh i just didn't expect that but he had it and it was it was yeah. awesome what's amazing is really this i mean it's got that very small wing that's doing its work it's best for the downforce but actually it's not a downforce car all yeah. of this is going through the tire oh dear oh what is that down there no they were that's in the from the wash sure yeah dark it's just darkness probably told me you your drink next but yeah that was a hell ride i mean he was you know I, I told him beforehand do whatever you want just please whatever you do don't go full throttle over turn one because turn one is a kink that happens right at the crest of a hill where it goes from uphill to downhill everything gets light and a really fast car like that is going to get really light yeah and he decided to not care yeah not he, respect he, he my wishes full, pelt, full yeah. fucking send i was nervous and, all day yeah. so yeah. i was supposed to go in the morning and it was foggy so they sent me home and I was like, oh my God, it's day of execution. I don't have to do this. <laughs> and they said, hey, at six o'clock, we're doing it again. You're coming. And I was the first one before even Peter Rawlinson. I was the mm-hmm. first passenger ride. So it was like pretty much untested. They'd just done a bunch of uh, software changes and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I was like, but the moment I got in the car, I was actually fine. I was oh, like, yeah, yeah this, it immediately had that video game feel. So I was yeah. like, this isn't real. If I die, only I my was, character dies. <laughs> I, I trusted him completely. I just do not like high speed, really high speed stuff. We that we had to do that yeah. over, over 150 for sure. Yeah, especially when um, you're not in control. Passing, yeah, passenger seat is tough. But yeah. that thing is just insanely capable. I mean, it's just, I, I don't, I love that it exists. And, and Lucid's team is, Dynamics team is among the best. And you, have you, you have not been in an air yet. There's one outside you should steal. I'm on um, my way. <laughs> Come clean. back, we'll pause it. Um, but it, uh, it is dynamically a masterpiece. I'm surprised at how tail happy that car was. Yeah, it was. I was shocked. The problem, the problem is, as I explained to the the team, and the passenger seat, I don't know what Ben's doing. I don't know if that's tail happy because he's blipping it and then lifting it because yeah. I don't hear an no, internal combustion anything. engine. Um, it's just sideways and then sideways. But they had made one calibration change at Ben's request right before my run, which was to, um, on the way out. So turn two is really the first turn and it's a double apex kind of a long like 100 and i don't know how many many degrees 
Um, and he wanted to be able to rock it out of that better. And so they made a change which ultimately fucked the car up. You know, this is a development car. It made it so that if he came in under ABS into turn two, he it then wouldn't torque vector until he was on the throttle, on big throttle on the way out. Right. So there was no torque vectoring for a long 200 and something degree corner. Uh, it was really interesting to see because the car is actually like the other one, whiff of understeer. It's kind of normal. And then as soon as he got back on the gas, <laughs> hand of God, just turned the car and fucking launched to the next corner. Uh, it was really cool. And they, you know, they were apologizing to me like, oh, sorry, we made that change. And it had an un unintended thing. And I'm like, no, 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 no. That was an awesome AB demonstration of what you can do when you can put 600 horsepower to one wheel and minus 600 horsepower on the other and turns the car. Yeah. Um, really neat. The real challenge then for next time, if you're the passenger, is to figure out how to use Spotify while moving the map out of the way on their entertainment system. I would have thrown up within literally 0 0.9 seconds. Yeah, that's that's still tough. And also, I got in it last night. It takes more than a few seconds to, re <laughs> to realize it's nighttime. Yeah. So I got in at the dead of night. My eyes are completely adjusted to the dark and it just goes bright dash. And you're like, no. And it takes like 20 to 30 seconds to go, oh, okay, it's nighttime. <laughs> so it's like... It's, it is, it's all fixable. All my issues I have with that car are fixable. You know what the best thing you said to me? You got out of the, when I first saw you, you said, you know what? Everything, all of my complaints about this car are are fixable because they're software. Yeah. And now I gave that car probably too good of a review in the icons. I didn't really say anything negative about it because I was concentrating on the hardware, knowing that the software can be fixed. And this review is permanent, right? I can't go back and change right. a YouTube video. So I thought I will... Every single thing that I brought to the attention, I had a three hour session where I beat the shit out of the engineers after I had my initial loan on the car. And this was me helping them because I want them to succeed. I love the, I, I love that they're there. And so I had, I think a 74 point punch list of complaints about the car and to their unbelievable credit, no one got upset with me. No one got mad. And, um, every time I had a complaint, yep, we're aware of that. Here's why it happened. Here's how it went wrong to, to start that from happening. Here's what we're doing to fix it. And here's the release that it's coming out in every single time. Nice. And so I left all of that out knowing this review is permanent and those problems aren't and they're all software. Oh, so you made the right move. We, yeah, we can't change videos once they're out. Right. right. It's not like written stuff. It's, yeah, so. it's tough. You, can, you can do an edit. You know, you can do it in the description. No one cares anyway. But the car, you and I agree on that. The car spectacular. The UX, it's usually a problem. Fixable. Well, they fired the whole team. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Fixable. They brought, they, yeah, they fixed it. <laughs> Heads so will roll. They, uh, they brought in, I can't remember the guy's name, Huge. He's like six foot 100. And it's called um, him Hugh. Just. Hugh. Hugh. Uh, and he's from Apple and he's mortified and apparently just is going to fix the whole thing. Wonderful. So, yeah. I have well, very yeah. high hopes of that company. But you know, people get upset as well because it's not massively cheap. You know, they come out with these performance versions where right. everyone wants a more accessible version. But. I, we'll see. I commend them for doing what they're doing. What What's happening right now is the Air and now the Sapphire are both enormous middle fingers from Peter to Elon. But how much value is there in a middle finger? It's time to move on. Yeah. And I've... I, this is my, the conversation I had with them all is like, guys, I love that you're doing this and I love that the car is as good as it is. Congratulations. Stop. Put down your pencils and go make the gravity because I want your the company to continue to exist so you guys can go back and do this some more. Gravity being the SUV. Gravity being the SUV. Yeah. And get that gravity out and then get the midsize SUV out, which would be next. Um, and just shore up the business so that you can come back and make some more amazing shit. Right. I don't want them to go away because, wow, what a fucking product. Because they were too busy giving middle fingers to right. people. And, yeah. and in the process of doing it, created a better Model S. And there's, but there's about to be a lot of competition. Yep. Was the world crying out for a better Model S or other things like the, you know, what Polestar are doing? And Look at what, they're, what the world is buying. Even Lotus is doing right. uh, the Electra? Electra. I don't even know. I'm they got their SUV. Like, la, la, <laughs> you love heavy Lotuses. I do. Lotus has a long history of saying they're going to do things and then not doing it in modern years. Yeah, well, so. there was that one guy who who is in jail now. I think he promised he introduced five cars yeah. at. I was uh, there. He was, and, and here's another one. And another one. Like, what the fuck are you doing next? Well, he was in jail. That's what he was doing. They were, he was were stealing they, money. Were they represented at Call Week, Lotus? I didn't see them no, anywhere. I no. didn't see them. I didn't see. I should bring the Lotus next year. I don't think I see, saw one Elise all week. I saw a couple. There was apparently another Ivory GT4 driving around with US bumpers. There was uh, a white one. Ivory? Is oh, that, right. Is that the name of it? You Ivory. Mine's Avorio Avorio Safari. Safari. Oh, okay. You didn't call it that this week. Yeah. Ivory yeah. Safari. Yeah, you were uh, calling oh. it something else. <laughs> Bianca Sporto? Yes. Jizz White? Mm-hmm. Jizz White. What did you say I should... Oh, my, my license plate should be what? You know, you said your license plate should be Cum Dino. 
And no, that, come, no, sorry, I did so not. Come, come Dino, but it's no, it should be Svachim, which is the New York, uh, New York <laughs> Italian. Derek is having a fucking coronary over here. You not, said wait, wait, we wait, can not, say anything on this podcast. No, 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 Derek is not having a coronary because of we're talking about a cum white car. Yeah. Derek is having a coronary because I said the word Svachim and not Zbora. Because Svachim is New York Italian bastardized, bastardized from Neapolitan slang. And he's like, that is unproper. The proper term for ejaculate is <laughs> Zbora. Is it not? Yeah, but you, should, you said it should be cum dino, which reads as cum dino, which is just you said measures the speed dino. of... Certain things. Yeah. I would just all that to say there was a white one, was a an white actual one. <laughs> white one with U.S. bumpers okay. circulating this week, and that is kind of the worst possible outcome you could have. Yeah, I love well, no red. I, I'm sorry, we have friends with red ones, but a red 308 GT4 with boxer, like boxer black lowers. Um, wound up being a perfect car. I fit everything I needed to fit for a week, which, by the way, included an entirely new wardrobe because I'm so fat I can't fit into any of my old clothes in the trunk and then my laptop bag on the passenger seat in a trash bag in a trash bag because it would otherwise be fumigated how's your jacket it smells yeah see his jacket was in the trunk for petrol. a couple of days mm, i don't know unburned, the, unburned petrol. something well unburned oil, partially burned little, stuff yes um yeah it no longer leaks so much that i can't take it anywhere it got 14 miles per gallon oh, over the whole hmm. trip on hyper miling hyper how Isn't many miles did you do 442 i think 440 i don't know how i put so many miles also i was 414 I last year I did closer to a thousand. I barely, I, I think last year I just drove everywhere. Um, and I think I made a trip home in the middle. Maybe that's what it was. Usually it's more than that. It was only 440. It was lovely though. You took me for a passenger ride. I thought it was great. You need to drive it. It is, you know, so, oh, I started, to, this is how I started this whole supercar thing is I was talking to Gordon. What I love about the car is that it promises kind of nothing, but it really is the, the one of the only two f- vintage Ferraris that has genuinely delivered on the experience I expected from it. The other one was a 288 GTO. Wow. Um, but the, it is comfortable. The visibility is good. It's, you just get it in and it's okay. The driving position is a little crooked, but it's not crooked to the point where you just never feel uh, in control. It's a little bit crooked, but mostly great. And then it's a lovely experience of a nice ride dominated by the coolest, most intricate engine noises the sound is, the is sound a big is, part of yeah. that car yeah. and it changed because it's carbureted there's it sounds very different under load than it sounds under part load um and it's constantly changing and then there's the drop gears so that the crank comes out there are three gears that bring the power down and then it goes back under the engine for the transmission and those three gears whine with revs but then also with load and then you hear the synchros clear as day so you get the all these wild noises that are happening but it's not beating you up and it wound up being a really good nice, visibility. Good, yeah. Great ride quality. Great ride quality. Really That's light, great. delicate steering, mm-hmm. but not unnervingly so and quite talkative. It's also got an interesting presence. It's not obviously a Ferrari, right. I don't think, to the layman. It could, no. it, from afar, it could be an Esprit. Uh, or, Esprit. Yeah. Yeah. The most common guess that I got when I owned that car was Esprit. I got and then, yeah. uh, especially because it's white. DeLorean. Yeah. DeLorean. yeah. People would often say that. The, the, oh, yeah. People who didn't know shit about cars. They revealed obviously. that new DeLorean, I think, in the last week or so. Yeah, I missed it. Yeah. I mi- yeah. Uh, FOMO. So, people seem to not care, though. I, I really don't care. Uh, but let me ask, what do you think, Gordon? So, you, we know why we love this car. Why Why do you think I have Gordon no Murray, idea. Why would Gordon Murray want? He said, it, well, it violates my rule of thousand kilos it's one of my only cars it's uh, over a thousand kilos of course he's got like a 57 chevy and like some enormous fin fin cadillac and stuff um and i you know he said it's just absolutely nothing like the 308 the two-seat cars they're de- you know they're beautiful and i'm like okay and 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 he's like and they're terrible i didn't say the word terrible but he said they don't drive nearly as well and the reasons why i would give is because driving position visibility sound for sure um all of the things that we've discussed his was uh, the weight distribution is much better in the GT4 than it is in the two seaters. The polar moment is smaller, Why and is you that? sit at uh, I don't know, and you sit at the front axle. No, at the center of gravity on that car, oh. front to rear, and so the car pivots around you, and the structure is dramatically stiffer than the than the GTB GTS cars. Those are things I I mean to me I feel like I sit far in front. Yeah, it feels like center. you're sitting quite but, far forward. But he's, he, I love that he approaches it. So it comes to the same conclusion, but for very, very different reasons. Mm-hmm. Like structure. I never noticed structure in a 308. I had that with uh, Christian. Uh, in the Pinin like, Farina cars? Yeah, he's like, he said he's got a Miata and it's the best thing he's ever touched. And um, I was like, yeah. No, he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Why did we bring him on the show? I'm kidding. Um, first guest. I'm the first guest, you said. You are the I'm first perfect. ever guest. Otherwise, yeah. I mean, you see this, we had to, 
sort of that's more official than anything we've done so (laughs) you got two exclamation points yeah (laughs) (laughs) now you know we're youtubers um just shouting all the time yeah and it's in all caps in all caps yeah for for legibility um Uh, structural (laughs) deficiency on the pinion free cars yeah especially most because most of them are open top right i think i've only driven one or two cars with roofs of those Hmm. but yeah without the roof it's, it's a pin and Ferrari, Ferrari, that one? Yeah. Uh, mine is Bertone. Okay. The GT4 is Bertone, the only Ferrari done by Bertone ever, right? Well, a lot of them were coach built, so there was like the Bertone right. body 250 in the... Yeah, but officially, the only Bertone design... Catalog car, catalog car, effectively. Um, yeah. And then the pin and Ferrari cars are uh, the 308 GTS and GTB. The, it's so beautiful. Right. I mean, they're so but You, you had to get very weird and wonderful during car week to be unique. And I ran into a 456 pin and Ferrari wagon... Four oh, door, God. Yes. four door wagon. So I uh, got to sit in that car, and the guy who owns it also owns a black F fifty, oh, which okay. belonged to this guy who, first owner, I think, maybe put fifty thousand miles on it. The car now has seventy two thousand wow. miles. Uh, but that car, uh, the wagon, the Venice, it's called. I think it the was Venice, a, yeah, a, a exactly. Sultan of Brunei car originally, yeah, or Brunei family, and they had, they, I think, they built six or seven of these cars total, and. Uh, Evidently, that royal family is not super big on manual transmissions, uh, and so that car is an automatic 456, but it was before the factory-built automatic came out, uh, and so it uh, has an automatic from a Mercedes, and the shifter has the like Mercedes squiggle instead oh. of the little straight slot is what you get in the GTA. Uh, but reported the owner is going to convert it to a manual, okay. mm-hmm. and is it's going to be returned then? to its original color combination, which apparently was green on green. <laughs> wow. so, so it's going to be a green on four-door V12 manual Ferrari Ferrari wagon. Correct. Yeah. Which is just like, just if you were here. to combine every... With pop-up headlights. <laughs> yes. If you were to combine every attribute ever of things that just get people like irrationally excited, yeah. I mean, that car will just... How does that rank, though, douche to experience, do we think? I don't care what the fuck experience <laughs> When, I think honestly, wagons automatically exempt you from douche. That's just yes. We've just, so the factors, and especially relating to Ferraris, that sort of douche proof the car is uh, non red, four seats, manual transmission, natural aspiration. So if you have any Ferrari that has those attributes, it's douche proof. Douche proof. Even like any of them, not any of them. You need to have like probably what the number is three out of those. Oh, this is five like characteristics becoming like a DSM for diagnostic. Yes, to exactly. Have, to be diagnosed as insane you have to be have five yes. of these seven characteristics or like what be, is comatose you, right? be careful. you have to like respond to pain or something right. like that if you don't respond to pain then you're not, you're not anyway you're there's not a comatose. score yeah so you guys are at risk of gatekeeping certain experiences if you if you give them i mean nobody scales. listens to us so it doesn't really matter we're just gatekeeping i listen I, I take your words as gospel I, you know you guys are very important i think that's weird that's yeah. you should wrong. get that checked we should put him through the dsm <laughs> to see if he's see insane or conscious i'm not sure um no, I, we just look, we have our own opinions and, you know, it's very easy to dismiss a car and then you talk to somebody about what they love about it. And it could be something as simple as, I just love the badge. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Or I wanted one when I was a child. Right. Yeah, the, that's the thing. The other quanti- unquantifiable thing is there's a story there. Yep. There's something mm-hmm. that they did with their father or their mom yep. or their... That's what yeah. pe- made Petrolicious. I mean, yeah. Petrolicious' entire series of hundreds of videos was, my dad had one of these when I was a kid, or my dad bought me this car, or my dad this, my dad... Or it this became a little bit one note. Right. right. Yes. Um, but that's, and those are perfectly legitimate reasons to own cars, and so anyone who's owning cars for those reasons needs to discount what we're saying because yeah. we're approaching from a different place. Yeah. But I, but that, that isn't the case for the new supercar, so that's what I understand that. Like no one's a, when you see a YouTuber say, I just bought my dream car, and it was a car that was announced six months ago for the first time, it's like, what? How long were you dreaming? Well, well okay, they, so they bought it with daddy's money yeah. and, and in, in collab with the manufacturer to get the... I, I, pfft, fuck that. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Is that does that mean of me? No, I just not. I no. just can't. We should be calling out misbehavior. Who is she? I thought she was Mrs. Behavior. <laughs> I got James to laugh. <laughs> I mean, Derek. I got Derek to do the the face palm. Like, oh god, James. Yeah. But I got the funniest man on automotive YouTube to laugh. Oh, okay. That's a big. That's a big claim. Uh, you realize Gently. that you were the funniest guy. Gently ever. dry. Gently dry. Gently dry. <laughs> so, I, I read about stop, it in a section. <laughs> uh, but I think gently dry goes a long way to explaining my, my car week experience, just to bring the whole thing full circle. I think uh, 
It was it was very difficult, very tiring. Uh, I had you as a chaperone, so thank you so much. That was great. Yeah, it was um, fun to be around. And I had good company as well with Greg on our team and uh, and Misha and Chris um, as our Airbnb mates in Salinas. I'm not going to stay in Salinas next yes. time. I think it's so. That's the key takeaway. Don't yeah, stay in Salinas. Yeah, you know, it's got its own stuff going on, and the food was okay. But when you say stuff, you're talking about meth. It's yeah. a cultural experience. Okay. Right. Yeah, they told me it was <laughs> it was fun crystals, but. Um, <laughs> But yeah, no, I, uh, car week, car week. So you just to say it was a blur. <laughs> <laughs> you're coming in at, in 2022 at car yeah. week. You, when was your first car week? 98. Holy fuck. How old are you? Um, we, don't we talk about this every episode? Still well 94. into my nineties. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, <laughs> and I'm, I think I'm at year 15 or 14, 14. Um, it's changed a lot. So definitely to me, the offensive part of it was the amount of manufacturer debuts. And especially the quail. The quail the quail is an event called the quail, comma, a motorsports gathering. And ten years ago, not oh God, I sound like that old man, but ten years ago, and historically it was In my day, the quail hadn't even been invented yet. The quail was a bird. Yes. I can't believe you waited sixty years to go. <laughs> um <laughs> It, uh, it was very much about motorsports and it was very much about the legends of motorsports and the cars were the centerpiece of the whole event. <clears throat> you would see Sterling Moss walking around. You'd see, you know, traditional race car drivers. Obviously, they go away. And apparently there was a Brad Pitt sighting or something I that? saw. But, but the focus of this year's Quail was very much the boutique small manufacturers booths that were around the whole thing. Yeah. No one paid attention to the unbelievable show cars that were on the, on the field. Yeah. In between. The show cars are the highlight for me. And that was always, I think the original mission was that <clears throat> the Concord Elegance used to be much more of a stick in the mud. I mean, I think that best of show has gone once to a post-war car. It is always a pre-war car. It is like the idea that there would ever be a Lamborghini on display at Pebble was her heresy right. when the quail came into existence. Uh, and so it really used to be very stick in the mud. And they're like, we're trying to get hip. We had like a hot rod class this year and we put it on the cliff right near the ocean where mm. at the very end of the Hoping field where that that they would all <laughs> fall into the water. Uh, but they're like, we're trying to modernize and we're having post-war cars. But the original purpose of the quail, from my perspective, was we're going to do some stuff that's not like stodgy old pre-war shit. Uh, and so there was like really interesting cars from that period that just didn't have a place to be displayed. You could go to Concorso Italiano and be in a sea of Ferraris if it happened to be Italian. But other than that, you know, there was not a sort of group Catch of all. cars that were displayed that were high quality, but not Pebble Beachy, mm -hmm. you know, not Conquery cars. That's interesting. Uh, and that yeah. was like the beginning and yeah, obviously that's and not now. what it is now. No, <laughs> and this was my first experience of it. So I didn't feel like, oh, last year there was this or 10 years ago. So to yeah. me, this was... The quail, my experience of the quail was, this is the, what the quail is. It's these boutique yeah. manufacturers. That's, that's why I love having you on the show to, yeah. to introduce sort of Pebble. Because but I didn't mind it. I thought it was cool. I, I was like, here's either. a Rimac, here's a Bugatti, here's the thing. Although my, I got a video, the, my experience of the Bugatti unveiling was very funny because everyone in front of me was much taller. Mm -hmm. So my experience was shoulders and phones. And I had to mm -hmm. look at someone's phone. And I was like, oh, is that what it looks like? You know. Mm -hmm. it was so it's really funny because all the traditional car shows are going away. Detroit is half dead. LA is half dead. And now what they've done is replaced those with this and bringing journalists in i mean i didn't the ticket for the quail is a thousand bucks or near about right yeah, and so right. i didn't if you can get one if you can get one and i certainly couldn't and i can't afford that so but i was bought a ticket by a manufacturer who wanted me to be there for their unveiling i sure great but that's not what that should be where it's you know there was a press conference schedule for the quail 905 910 930 920 whatever it was that's very different than it used to be it used to be Great food, a lot of alcohol. Everyone's tanked by the end of it. Um, everyone's sunburned and dehydrated. I was, I was very sunburned, yeah. yeah. But but then the cars were like, holy shit, amazing. The cars were still holy shit, amazing. But we were so, like, you know, I ran around to, I wanted to talk to Gordon Murray people about, obviously, I want to drive a T50. Um, but you're going around and looking at all these boutique manufacturers and ignoring the the show cars. So it became a substitute for low-volume low manufacturers at traditional auto shows, which is a very, very different thing and not not what I hoped for. Interesting. Um, okay. Pebble has continued, like, you know, 10, I was, I don't even know it was like in the 90s, but 10 years ago, there were no, how they just started with the houses. Rolls-Royce would have a house, uh, you know, Bentley would have a house, and they, they would have parties like an ongoing party all week where customers could come in and drive cars and whatever now it's basically open to the public anyone can come in and drive anything um and they are Ugh, peasants no that's cool but they are mobbed 
and it's not just Hyundai. It's not just um, uh, Rolls Royce and Ferrari. It is Hyundai, Kia, Lexus, Acura. I mean, everyone who wants to be in the luxury game and really has no right to be like Kia. I mean, they make yeah. amazing. They, cars. they had the EV6 GT mm. on display. No one was there. No one was saying right. I mean, it. It felt that, it didn't belong. That, that EV6 is let me. It fantastic. Fantastic it's car. A fantastic car. There's a time and a place. Right. That's not the time for it. Genesis, yeah. sure, maybe. Um, yeah. You know, Lexus had to have it start somewhere too. But this, it's a very interesting week when you have Hyundai peddling cars to people who are also looking at $3 million. No, but max. at least Lexus had their electric LFA mm-hmm. concept thing on, on display. So that somewhat fits. Uh, you just miss stuff. Yeah. You just can't help but so miss much. stuff. You can't but, see it all. But in, in the first year, you just get overwhelmed and then you start to be like, I like this, I like this. And then you just sort of curate going you just forward. Choose. Yeah. So. It's like when you go to a restaurant for the first time, you order a bunch of stuff and there's five of you and the next time you go and there's two of you, you pick your favorite stuff. Yes, yeah. exactly yeah. that. So, so, which means you just need to come back next year and for the next 20 years or 40 or 50, yes. however many years. By then you might optimize. Yeah. Or it'll change so much no one will recognize it. I just probably want to drive a roof all day, which is what you guys are going to talk about in your next podcast. So make sure you stay tuned for that because <laughs> it's going to be brilliant. It's a professional. Yeah. Are we supposed to do that shit? Like we're supposed to organize our thoughts and figure out what's you, next? More you than won't believe seconds. what happened to Jason in the roof. <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Yeah, the seat was not um, brown before he got in there. It was. It was brown. It was brown. No, I didn't even know. Couldn't tell you. It was, a it was green on the outside. I did notice that. Very unusual for you to notice the color of a car. I know, I know because I took a picture of it. I really was like, oh, it's green? <laughs> well, I literally didn't even know. Next week will be the roof. Uh, next week will be the roof. James Engelsman from the Throttle House, half of the Throttle House. You're watching Throttle House. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. That's so good. It's just so good. His I voice, do. he's got the most amazing radio voice. Hey, Thomas says, I feel like if I sit, no, it doesn't even work whenever I get, yeah. if I choke up on the mic, it still doesn't work. Yeah. Thomas, you, Thomas got the radio voice and I'm like, I like mate. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Um, I've had this voice since I was eight. Have you? Really? No. Six. Six. Seven. Five. Hey, Mom. Hi, Mom. <laughs> um, hope to nice. see you again uh, on our set, on our very professional set, with the new television. No, thank uh, you that, for having me. That is now fully full width and um, at the next Carl Show. Plus, we, or at next Pebble Beach. Plus, we should probably do some videos where we do some stupid shit together because you guys are funny. I'm in. I'm in. Okay. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you very much. This is great. We're glad to have you with us. This has been episode 66. I can't count that high. I might have made that up, but I think it's right. Bye.